I'm David Weston from Bloomberg News, and I'm delighted now to welcome Dalip Singh. He is Deputy National Security Advisor in the Biden White House. So welcome, Dalip. Great to have you here. The subject is the connection between the economy on the one hand and security on the other hand. We've seen that, I think, displayed in the G7 summit and then in the EU summit as well, just in recent days. Give us a sense of what the Biden administration was trying to accomplish with respect to the economy as well as security at the G7. Yeah, David, uh, glad to be with you. You're right, we've just come back from Europe uh, and we were at the G7, also Brussels. And, you know, the president likes to talk about this being an inflection point. Uh, we're at one of those historical moments in which a contest is playing out. You have some who think a top-down autocratic model is the best way forward. And there are others like us uh, who are out to make the case that democracy and, and share democratic values are the single best way to deliver results for our people and to meet the biggest challenges of our time. So that's what, uh, that's what this moment is all about for us. And I'm, I'm happy to describe in some detail uh, what we delivered. Well, let me ask about that question very specifically, because the tone of this administration, I think it's fair to say, is quite different from that of the predecessor. Uh, you're much more multilateral. President Biden, from his experience, from his nature, really wants to get together with allies and get a consensus going. When you go to a G7 and they say, OK, that's nice language. What are you doing? What did you get accomplished? What specifics came out of it? Yeah, so look, there's no bigger challenge right now that requires collective action than COVID. Uh, so, you know, when he first came into office, President Biden launched a wartime effort to defeat the pandemic at home. We've had a lot of success uh, in doing so. Cases are down over 90 percent. Deaths are down over 85 uh, percent. Millions of Americans are getting back to living their lives. But you're right. Uh, the question is, what can we do together with our allies and partners to end the pandemic across the world, knowing uh, it knows no borders? And that was the basis for our announcement last week. Uh, we, the U.S., put forward 500 million donations of Pfizer vaccine to the 100 lowest income countries in the world. And importantly, this donation was made without any conditions, no strings attached. The sole purpose was trying to save lives. It was the right thing to do. So by making that donation, we mobilized our G7 partners. They matched our pledge. So we now have over 1 billion doses we're giving to the world, uh, the poorest countries of the world, again, with no strings attached. And it's not just about vaccines, it's about boosting manufacturing capacity, easing some of the distributional and storage bottlenecks, and trying to put a definitive end to the pandemic that's raging across the world. Uh, one of the things that we learned about at the G7, at least I learned about the G7, was the Build Back Better for the World plan, which is really to help with infrastructure and other aid around the world globally. And I, I do understand it to be in part an alternative to one belt, one road coming out of China. What was the reaction from our allies to that? Yeah, and I'll, I'll step back here as well, David. I mean, look, we, we came into the G7 from a position of economic strength, and our goal was how can we broaden that globally? Uh, you know, so we've, we've, we've gotten ourselves on track for the fastest GDP growth projection this year in the past 40 years. The unemployment rate is likely to drop from a high of over 14% to under 6% very soon. And we're on track to get back to the pre-pandemic peak by 2023. That would be seven years faster than after the 09 recovery. So the idea coming into this G7 is how can we how can we broaden that story globally? How can we strengthen it? And that's how the Build Back Better for the World idea came about, is how can we as a G7, the major democracies of the world, how can we put forth a high standards, transparent, climate-friendly alternative to the Belt Road Initiative? Uh, and it's for developing countries that have very large needs in terms of infrastructure broadly, climate, health, digital technology, and gender equality. So coming out of that meeting, we had enthusiastic endorsement of the concept. And our collective aim now is to amass hundreds of billions of dollars towards this goal. Uh, and so what you're going to see over the next few months is uh, we'll put forth specific plans on where this money is going to go, how it's going to get raised, and how we're going to partner together uh, to make it a reality. It's fascinating. It's quite an initiative. Thank you very much for sharing with us. That's Mr. Dalip Singh. He is the Deputy National Security Advisor.